eventually, when you mature spiritually, you get to a point that all you want is to be free. But now you've come to understand what freedom means. It means to be free of yourself. It doesn't mean anything else. Until freedom means to be free of yourself, you will never be free. The only thing that keeps you from absolute freedom is yourself. So while you think that freedom means the freedom to get what you want, the freedom to do what you want, the freedom to be where you want, the financial freedom, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, et cetera, you're still very lost and you will never know freedom. And it's not the freedom to merge with God and to go deep into meditation. While that's what you're thinking, you're still thinking. It is when you become really, really clear, and it takes a real long time, and you just see, you know, this thinking stuff is way overrated. It's really not done me much good, and it's really not doing me much good. It's sort of like I'm working for my mind. My mind decides I'm not okay. And the moment it decides I'm not okay, guess what? I'm not. My mind decides this will make me okay, and guess what happens? The moment it decides this will make me okay, and that starts to happen, I am okay. It's like the mind's psychic or something. It just knows everything. That's what it would like you to think. But the truth of the matter is, this is the type of psychic that your mind is. I see water being dumped on your head as it picks up the water and dumps it on your head. I was right. No, that's not a psychic. That's not a psychic at all. Your mind is sitting there closing you because it doesn't like what's happening. And then it says, see, I told you you wouldn't like this. And your mind is sitting there opening so that you can feel the flow of the Shakti when it gets what it wants. And then the mind is saying, see, I told you that's what you wanted. That's what you come to know about the mind. It controls your state of being. So freedom cannot possibly be to get what the mind wants because you are bound by the mind's wants and not wants. And freedom cannot possibly be, and this is a tough one for people, to be free to merge into God. Why? Why are you not free? You're not free because of your mind. So if you have a mind that's keeping you not free, and then the mind is saying, I know the answer, we need to learn to meditate. We need to merge into God. We need to go to India. You know you're in trouble when your mind starts telling you how to get to God. That is a sure sign that you are in deep trouble. But that's what the mind does. So a wise, mature being comes to see, I am the problem. There is no other problem. I am the only problem. My personal mind is the cause of every single problem I have. It's the cause of my problems in my personal life. It's the cause of every problem I have in this world with everybody and everything. And it is the reason that I cannot naturally merge with God. So the problem is me. Once you come to know this so deeply that all you ever want is freedom from yourself. That's all. Now you're ready. Now you're ready to work on your freedom. Then the question becomes, how do you get free from yourself? You can go through many, many techniques, and many people teach many different things. I can only discuss with you one way. Then you have to see for yourself. The mind is a problem because it has wants and not wants. If the mind does not have wants and not wants, the mind is not a problem. If it doesn't want things, then it won't disturb you because it doesn't have them. It won't keep looking around to see how to get them. It won't be jealous because somebody else has them. It won't do anything because it doesn't care. Just notice what your mind does about things it doesn't want. Nothing. That's <laughs> what your mind does about things it doesn't care about. Absolutely nothing. God, I saw Mary walking with Saul last night. And thought we we're going to go eat. That's the end of it, because you don't care. The mind doesn't care. And when the mind doesn't care, you are transcendent. 
you are in a state where nothing can disturb you. How do you like that? Isn't that neat? People always talk about where they're caught. I want to talk about where you're not caught. There are many, many more places you're not caught than places you're caught. In fact, the more you study it and examine it, you will see there's a whole universe of things. 99.999% about you don't care. There was wind blowing on Saturn yesterday. There's a little bit less on Mars's ice cap than there was before. A worm three feet under, seven feet over on the field over there had a baby. Net result is you don't care. It doesn't do anything to you. You are in a state of equanimity. Here, I want you to see the depth of the spirituality. The Gita talks about this great state of equanimity, that that's how you tell a yogi. In joys, he's not overjoyed. In sorrows, not over sorrowed. Let's goodness come when it will and when it will depart. And let's darkness come when it will and when it will depart. He's a stranger, a sojourner in the midst of the qualities of nature. Just as all this rivers and streams of the earth pour into the ocean, but leave the ocean as it found it. It doesn't overflow its bounds. And then it closes with the yogi, the whole world pours in through the portal of the senses, and it leaves him as it found him, untouched. This state of equanimity is yoga. You know that state. You have it about everything you don't care about. So you do know what equanimity is like. The problem is there are a handful, literally just a tiny handful of things in the whole universe that you do care. How many? You could probably list them. It's a finite amount, but there's an infinite universe. So you take that finite amount and you look and you say, those things mess me up. If those things happen a certain way, I freak. If those things happen another way, I'm happy. These things run my life. I do not have equanimity about these things. In fact, I have the opposite of equanimity. I am totally disturbed by these things. I am totally attached to these things. We know about that. Then now you understand your freedom and your lack of freedom. If I fill you with a room of things you care nothing about, whether your eyes are open or closed doesn't make any difference. Whether they're talking or silent doesn't make any difference. You don't care. God, I tried to impress upon you that is not a cold state. It just means you don't care. Well, if you don't care, then it doesn't draw you into it. Then it doesn't make your mind active. Then it doesn't disturb your state of being. When your mind is not active and you're not being pulled into the world through the senses and your state of being is not being disturbed, guess where you go? To God. If nothing's distracting the self from self, the self will fall into self. That is its natural state. Something must be drawing your attention, drawing your consciousness away from your seat of self so that you get involved in it. Well, those are the things that you care about. The things you don't care about, don't do that. Spirituality isn't what people think it is, literally. It's way deeper than that. So now you understand that there is a handful of things in your life that have the ability to disturb you. What does it mean to disturb you? They have the ability to draw your consciousness into the activity of your mind and draw your mind onto the object of caring, onto the object of attachment. And when they do that, you get disturbed. You lose your seat of consciousness. You lose your seat of meditation. You lose the stability of mind. Either it goes freaky because it likes it or it goes freaky because it doesn't like it. To the yogi, they're the same. So the question becomes, what are these things, the very few things, that you don't have equanimity about And how does one achieve equanimity? Because we now got it very simple. It's all about you and your relationship to the things that you either like or dislike. And that's why I always come back to the great way is not difficult for those who have no preferences. Third Zen patriarch. When love and hate are both absent, everything becomes clear and undisturbed. Make the slightest distinction, however, and heaven and earth are set infinitely apart. There. There's a man who knew what he was talking about. It is because your mind is differentiating this undifferentiated world into what you like and what you don't like that you are stuck in the state that you're in. So if you work with anything other than that, you're working at the wrong level. If you are working on anything other than the fact that you are still differentiating what you like from what you dislike, you're not going to get there.